Hey everyone and welcome to episode 29 of Video Games Ahoy. My name is Jonathan Radford and today I'm joined by Dav Gate. I love you too. <laughs> How are you doing Dav? I'm doing well. Last week on the podcast you said you loved me and we, I wanted to say I loved you too. We, we, we did. We, um, we, we missed you. We, we, I always feel like you you left um and usually you're like the voice of reason and me and zach are usually the voice <laughs> of mania like dav weeks is, is like the very cultured quiet voice in the corner that chimes in every now and then and me and zach are usually the man well specifically me brings the mania you just weren't there to ground us so i'm very glad you're i'm very glad you're back a lot less mania this week maybe. <laughs> uh it is just me and dav uh dav this week but that's, that's not a problem it wasn't here last week he's got lots to tell us uh dav, anything did you, did you get up to anything good last week or was it just nice nice thing just have a break. I went on a socially distant camper van holiday to oh, Cornwall. Nice. That actually it was sounds lovely. Very lovely. It was just the tonic I needed mm. from several weeks of hard work. Yeah, I do. Yeah, to be fair, I, I, I think we all deserve moments like that. But Cornwall, it's 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 a beautiful place, man. Did did you enjoy it? Like, where, where did you go? Well, all around. So we went Bude, Saint Ives, oh, nice. uh, Lands End, uh, Lizard Point. Eden Project, and oh, nice. um, yeah, it felt very nice, felt very safe, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and even found enough time to introduce my lady friend to a little game called Overcooked. Oh my god! Are you, are you still, <laughs> still are you, together? Are you still, still together? together? You survived yeah. that? Me, yeah, me yeah, and Rosie yeah. almost didn't, I'll be honest. We were, uh, <laughs> there's so many times where she just like, stop shouting at me. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I just want to, I need to get it cooked. No, I, I yeah. was able to, and, um, to, be patient with her incompetencies and she was able to be patient with my passive aggression <laughs> so it all worked out yeah that game uh, makes or breaks relationships but it's good she's a much better cook in real life as we said <laughs> um awesome should we get started on um absolutely great uh so yeah if you, if you are listening to the podcast for the first time then hey we are a little video game podcast called video games ahoy uh we are supported by a whole host of wonderful people over on patreon which is our patrons um and to everyone that does support us again i say this every week it, it, I, every time i say it, it feels like we're not saying it with the sincerity but we really do mean it thank you so much to everyone that contributes it, it really does mean the world to us um and if you would like to support us and please go ahead and check out our patreon page uh video games ahoy like i said you can pay uh one pounds five pounds ten pounds or anything you like uh and if you don't want to you can't then that's fine we just we just so grateful for you listening to the show. Uh, as well as Patreon, you can find us on the usual websites like Twitter and Facebook. Uh, and if you want to see our faces, then check us on YouTube because we're on there as well. Uh, and we're also, we also, I'd say we, we cover Twitch on most days. Yeah, now. we've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. I think it's just Friday and Saturday that we're not covered. Yeah. And... I, I think that's pretty good. I think, you know... I think so, so too, yeah. yeah. And we're doing a load of Ranger stuff as well, which is what I quite like. We'll, maybe we'll get to talk about Rocket League later. I don't think there's much more we can say about that, but we're still doing that on a Monday, and it's just... I, it's it's weird, because, like, Zach made a really good point. I'm I'm kind of glad we're not, like, amazingly brilliant, because we can still have, like, fun. Like, obviously, we want to win, and obviously, we yeah. want to do better, but, like, I mean, it's just kind of like... That, that spike mode. Oh, man, that was so, so much fun! Good. So and Zach, good. Zach, like, just became an absolute king. Yeah. When he's playing, that. he's got like seven goals, ridiculous. Um, but yeah, uh, so catch catch it on Twitch. Like I said, uh, we're um, three of us at least are streaming over more days, and I think Dav Weeks at some point does want to stream. Just uh, he's been very busy man at the moment, which is busy fair boy. enough. He's doing uh, loads of great things. Um, but yeah, check us out on Twitch, and uh, we're also proud to say that we're affiliated with Green Man Gaming. So if you do have any game needs, then please head on over to Green Man Gaming via the link in the description. Um, Dav, should we get into some news? Yes, please. Uh, so this is in no particular order uh, by date. I think the most important thing, or the biggest thing from the last week, um, and it actually happened whilst we were recording the last podcast, was the Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase. Um, so we're going to talk about a few things. Um, again, not in any particular order. I just think there's there's an order of things that we kind of need to talk about uh -huh. just based on, on, on the impact it might have on the Switch. The first thing we want to talk about actually is is not Hyrule Warriors, which is, I guess, a lot of people might think we'd start with. It's actually Control and Hitman. Cloud. Yes, that's, yes. that's exactly where I'm going. So um, if, if you don't know, then Control Ultimate Edition has just been released on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, but the catch is, it's on the cloud. Now, um, 
Control won in a load of awards. I never actually, I never actually got to play it myself. Dad, Dad, did you play it? I own it. I'm waiting for the Series X so I can play it in that, lovely version. Yeah, that's that's a good shout. That's a good shout. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I've heard so many good things. He was up for uh, Game of the Year, I think, at the at the Video Game Awards yeah. last year. So I mean, it, from most people who've played it, have said that it's it's a really really good game, but it's graphically well intensive. It's very very. It's not. It. it I don't think they would have got it onto the Switch in another way and to, i think they've actually confirmed that the last couple of days they actually came out and said there's no way this would have came out on the switch it's just yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it is, it's too taxing it just wouldn't have happened um so they've um again as well like i said hitman 3 is another one that's going to be released i don't think it has been released yet but it will be uh, and again that is a cloud version i think it begs uh like the, the begs the question really is is this we've mentioned before with like xbox maybe potentially putting you know x cloud on the switch do you think that this is a legitimate way for Nintendo to um, to to go, okay, there's certain third-party games that we're not going to be able to put onto the Switch, especially considering we're moving on to the next generation. Do you think that this is a legitimate way for them to go, okay, they'll, until we bring out the Switch 2, not even the Switch Pro, because the Switch Pro can't be too too much of an upgrade, because the, the original Switch has got to be able to play it, and so is the light, uh, any games that come out. But maybe the Switch 2, when you know it does... You know, bridge that gap a little bit more. Um, do do you think this is this? You think this is the way they're going to go, or do you think they're going to do it more on a case by case basis? I think it will be a case by case basis, but I think what we might see is companies like Ubisoft, hmm. who you know, Immortals is coming to the Switch, yep. but I think with this, I mean, Ubisoft loves supporting anything they can, any yep. kind of cloud service. They've got their own Luna, their own hmm. Stadia. We might see Assassin's Creed Valhalla on the Switch. Yeah which is mental. Mm. Now, I, I'm not sure what the... Ha- I think the handheld screen itself is maybe only 720, maybe 900, but I think mm. 720. Um, and I think the Switch itself can only output to 1080. Yeah. Um, but, you know, 1080p, it's going to be out on PS4 and Xbox One anyway, so, mm. you know, you've got some big games there. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is no small game. And no. one of the, it's one of the biggest games of the year. Yeah, to see things it, like that, and maybe Cyberpunk, like so, no, to imagine Cyber- that those games could come and not be downgraded versions like Witcher mm. Three. That's really interesting. Yeah, I, I think I, so. I it's it's interesting because I think it could be a really interesting way for Nintendo to go, especially if I, I guess for me it all depends on the pricing because this is the issue with with cloud games in general. You know, I mean. Okay, fair enough. When it comes to buying digitally digital games, you are kind of forced. Well, you have a, you know you have a period of time where you can only download that game, and once the eShop shuts for the specific console, like you can't. I don't. I don't think the Wii Shop works anymore. Um, so you, no, you know you can't. You can't download any games you bought on you know with your Wii anymore. But I think with like cloud versions, it's even. It's it's. It, I guess murky. the the the, the gap murky. gets even smaller because. It will tend to come out later and is more likely to shut sooner. So if you pay sixty pounds for a game that is never really yours, at least with like a game like um, when you've bought digitally, you can save it on you know you can save it onto your Switch. And as long as you don't delete it, and you know, and as long as nothing crashes, you should in theory still have that in ten years' time. In theory, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but that's not the same with cloud versions. So. I guess a follow-up question from that is because I, I I'm I'm totally on board Nintendo going down this route if that's if it works and especially if they can like f- foster an even deeper relationship with Xbox uh, and and Microsoft you know do we get X Cloud on there because surely this conversation's happening there I I'm convinced there is conversations happening because there's just too much in it for I guess both companies but you made a really good point last time that. Nintendo don't want to lose that control, so <laughs> hey, the control, control hey. Uh, but you know what I mean? It's like uh, it's interesting to see where they go with this. I, I, I just think pricing might be the thing that stops people from from yeah. going in, and maybe it's more of a. I mean, maybe it's a, maybe it'll just send us back into a time where you it's more of a loan system. You know, you rent the game for ten pounds, twenty pounds for like six months, but at least you know that oh, I'm I've borrowed this game for a specific amount of time. Do you know what I mean? Like. I, I I don't know. I, I, yeah, but then how much? But then how much would that cost? Exactly. Well, that's what I mean. Like it's is because I don't know how much it's. I don't know how much control is going for. I I probably should have checked. I think it's forty pounds. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, which, I think that's the price of the ultimate edition. 
Yeah, which it just kind of feels like if you've only got a Switch and you really want to play Control, then fair enough, go for it. But if you, I guess it's one of those same things where we need, if they really want to entice people to buy it as a legitimate option on the Switch, even if they've got a PS4, there needs to be a, there needs to be kind of leverage. To that. That, that, maybe, maybe that's how I feel. Maybe, maybe not. Um, You know, they could just go down this route and they're, they're satisfied with selling it as it is and maybe not getting as many people, but just making making money back. Hey, you know? if there's one thing game developers <laughs> like, game publishers like, it's money. <laughs> it it is it is making money. Um, so yeah, uh, so I I think that's we can probably leave that there. I I just think it's a, it's really interesting that they've done this because I know they trialed it last year with Resident Evil Seven in Japan. Yeah, and I think they tried it with um Odyssey as well, didn't they? Uh, Assassin's Creed yes. Odyssey. Yeah. So they did that. They did them both in Japan. So they must have worked because if they trialed it in Japan and now these you know. I've already downloaded Control because um, you can download the first five minutes and play that to see if, right. you know, if it runs. But I haven't actually played it yet. Uh, so my, see how it goes. My, my only issue is that I would want a Switch with an Ethernet connection. Yes. And that, currently yeah. it doesn't have one. Yeah. So. I, that, that, I mean, that is the thing really, isn't it? Because there's issues with the Switch in general. With, with the internet, it's not the best. It's quite. It can be very shaky. shaky. I remember the first time I actually bought the Switch. And I was trying to log. I was trying to like log into the internet, and it took me. I'm not even. It took me about the entire day, for whatever reason, for the switch oh to register. I don't know why. It just kept bouncing off. I was like, oh, okay, well there we are. But yeah, we'll see where it goes. We'll we'll keep. I, I think it's a good thing to keep an eye on. And I'm I'm not against it. I just think we'll just see how they manage yes. the cost and and where they go with that. We're cautious. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, so the next thing we should move on to is actually going to be Harry Warriors. And I think uh, I really want to talk to you about this because you actually. You played the demo, haven't you? I played the demo this lunchtime, on my lunch well, break. So I'm just going to put this out there for anyone not listening. I was always going to buy the game because uh, Breath of the Wild is probably either my favorite game or in my it's at least in my top five of all time. Like I love Breath of the Wild. I put over 200 hours into that game. But I think Dav, you you said you you you. I mean, you definitely weren't sold in the previous Hyrule Warriors. That <laughs> no. So, you were a lot more cautious than I was. Um, so you played the demo. Yeah, I mean, you've already yeah. told me what you were going to say. Like, I I played the demo for about ten minutes. Yeah. Um, and it drew my lunch break, and I thought I don't need to play any more of this demo. So mm. I stopped, deleted it. When I got home after work, I mm. bought the game. Uh, yeah, there we are. I and I complete. It, I can completely see why. It just felt like a Breath of the Wild game. It felt like a Breath of the Wild action game. Yeah. And Oh, just, just those sound effects alone are, yeah. are enough. You oh, know? The music, man. The main title uh, yeah. screen music was gorgeous. It's beautiful. But in that demo, we got more of a story than we did in the entire of Breath of the Wild. Yep. And I'm really hoping that's what the rest of uh, Age of Calamity is like. And if it is, then I am so yep. over the moon. Hmm. I, I don't even necessarily need a Breath of the Wild 2. Hmm. I feel like if we get that much story throughout the game, we get to play as the the the... As the, the the heroes yeah uh i i'm i'm so happy did you um have you seen the trailer for the um harry, harry warriors age of calamity uh yes the okay. original one yeah uh have you seen did you see the one they actually put out in the um nintendo direct last week yes okay yeah, you did yeah. see that one as well. okay um because uh, i don't I, I don't really want to talk about it too much because if i think if people want to watch the tra- some people don't like watching trailers some people do yeah um so watch the trailer if if, if you would like to i it was there's a couple of moments in that trailer i was like wow i'm very excited to play this game i think i played it um i've, I've been in contact with my brother who's who played the demo as well and you're totally right man and i i think the one thing i was worried about from the start and one thing you actually brought up a lot is the the, the combat system in the original the best way to describe it i would say the original hyrule warriors felt like a dynasty warriors game with like a, a zelda, a zelda paint yeah yeah skin whereas or this mod, feels like yeah. a zelda game in that combat style which is a very different thing yeah it doesn't it didn't even feel like a muso game no it just it, felt like an action game with a lot of enemies yeah and, and I, yeah the combat is it felt really grounded and there's the one thing i was really worried about because there's 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 a lot of ways of, of going you know going about the combat it's not just the you know the, the slashing and the all that kind of stuff you know you got your bows and arrows you got uh, the runes and there's enough varied combat there for me not to get bored. And I think you are totally right as well. The story was so good for that first opening section that you could just play that on easy. doesn't matter. Like yeah. just enjoy the story and just sort of breeze through the game. It's, it's, 
there's going to be enough there that if you're a Zelda fan, I I think that game's going to hit home for a lot of people. I'm not expecting it to be the best game of the year. I mean, I'd love it. I, I'd love it if it was. But um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just happy, like you, that there's going to be a lot of gaps filled in from Breath of the Wild, which is what we kind of wanted. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think there's much more to say about that. Um, I'm very excited. I think it wins it out in by the time this comes out, it'll be out in about two weeks, which is ah! amazing. Not long. Um, awesome. Let's move on to the next game because um, I want to talk about the Nintendo Direct um, for, the, for the most part of this because I think that yeah. was the biggest thing. But we'll skip a few things now. Uh, no More Heroes 3. Yes. That I was. Do you know what? I've, I've not actually played No More Heroes 1 or No More Heroes 2, but they are... Well, now's your chance. Now is the chance. They're, they're both on the Switch, which is also another thing. I was really happy about that. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, he um they, they were kind of... Uh, Suda51 was kind of like joking about it. He was being like, oh yeah, maybe I'll release them on the Switch. Who knows? And then bam, both they are. And they look great. Like they, they've um, from from what I've heard as well, they they put a lot of effort into making them look a lot better. Oh, right, good. And when I was looking at the um, No More Heroes three trailer as well, that game looks gorgeous. Like genuinely looks really really good. It does. I love the art style of that of that like uh, animated cutscene yeah. thing. And and the the like ah oh, just I love the story of the, mm. of that uh, trailer where you have the cute little thing. It's like the kid's best friend, like Saturday yeah. morning cartoon and everything. <laughs> Goes away, comes back to this really like edgy like prince of in this alien race who just comes and like yeah I'm just gonna destroy everything because I can. <laughs> and it's but just, yeah. yeah. It, it looks. I mean, I, I'm the vibes. The vibes. I, I'm probably gonna buy it. But I think I need to. I, 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 I won't buy it though. I know it's coming out next year. Um, but I'm. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't play it until I. Now that I've got the chance to play one and two. Yeah. I would. I probably would have just played three if I hadn't had the chance to play one and two. Um, I guess it raises the question because I've seen a lot of people say this: is that Nintendo did this with No More Heroes one and two, and I know it's not directly. I, I don't think it's directly from Nintendo. Why couldn't they have done it with like Pikmin, especially because Pikmin three is just been re-released. It's not doing particularly well because especially in the UK and we know why because we're just going into the middle of a lockdown. Um so they could have done that with Pikmin. They could have done it with Pikmin. Even just gone one and two collection and then three. You know, they could have done that, but there we are. Um but yeah I'm probably gonna play one and two. Um and I'm probably gonna th- play three. It looks yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um so let's move on to another game, a game that we've been waiting to hear from for a long time. That's Bravely Default 2. Now, um, there's been a lot of changes to that game because uh, weirdly, I played the demo. I didn't mind it so much. And I was I was going to buy the game because it did remind me of like Final Fantasy 9, like that old or even yeah. like the earlier Final Fantasy games. And I'm totally on board with that. But a lot of people did complain about certain things, but the difficulty and stuff. Now, apparently they've gone back and changed a lot of those things, which is great. But I think they've taken the demo away. Um... I, I tried looking for the demo, um, but it might there might be a new new demo. I think there I, might be a new one, yeah. I, so I might, maybe I'll try the new demo if if there is one there. Um, but yeah, it's not coming out this year as we kind of figured at this point. I'm lucky. Put... I, I'm happy it's not coming out this year because I've got these two to play. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh nice. I mean, I can't believe they're both. If you obviously, if you're listening to this podcast, you, you don't know that Dav's showing Bravely Default One and Bravely Second. Yeah, Bravely Second. Bravely Second. Which yeah. is so weird that it's. It's technically not Bravely 2. Yeah. yeah um, Bravely Default 2 launches exclusively for Nintendo Switch on February 26, 2021. So straight off the bat, that's two games that I really want to get next year. Mm. Two games from Nintendo that I really want to get next year. Um, and you actually mentioned this game earlier. Uh, we got another trailer for Mortals Phoenix Rising, uh, which is coming out on December the 3rd. It looks pretty good. Yeah, I imagine people, people are playing it and they're saying that it's good. I played it on... Um, what did I play? Was it Stadia I played it on? Stadia, probably. I think it was. I think it was free on Stadia for, um, the demo. Uh, about last week, and it it was pretty good. I, I'm very tempted to get it for the Switch. It it. I'm gonna see how it review, reviews first. I'm gonna see what people think of the game. But from what I played of it, it it was pretty. It was quite funny as well. Oh. And it, it, it's made by the same people. It's made by the same team that made Odyssey. So you, and Odyssey's from you know one of the best or one of the best recent. Assassin's Creed games by, you know, a lot of people have said, I haven't played it personally, but a lot of people have said it's one of the better recent ones. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm going to wait and see how the reviews go. Uh, but yeah, it's coming out on December the 3rd. Uh, so keep an eye out for that game. I, I, I definitely will. I'm, I, I've got loads of other games, specifically because um, I think we mentioned last week that um, uh, Cyberpunk has been moved to uh, December. December. So I the issue is that I've got a certain amount of games I can buy this year and 
that game has been on my list to buy all year. So wherever that moves, whatever game is closest to it <laughs> is, is going to go. Um, uh, so just run through the last of these games before we go into a quick topic. Uh, so then we had Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town. Uh, we had Part-Time UFO, uh, Surviving the Aftermath, Tropical 6, uh, Bakugan Champions of Vis- is it Vestroia? I never know. I, I don't know. That game looked terrible and it's reviewed terribly, so I'm not really surprised. Do you remember when we watched that live? Yeah. And we were just like so hyped because we watched the Paper Mario like we gameplay. Sh- Shante devs were gonna have something really cool. Yeah, like, and then a 2D was... Metroid or something. And it was back again, and it was it's not getting reviewed well as we thought at the time. It looked terrible. Yeah. Um, which is a shame. It was a real big shame. Uh, and then finally Griplands as well. So I guess um, the question I was gonna ask you, Dav, is do do you think that 2021 is going to be the best year? For title releases, or or just in general for the Switch, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some sure. some of my thoughts first, and then you can call me out on my nonsense, or whatever. But so far, we've got No More Heroes three, we've got Monster Hunter, we've got Bravely Default two, we've got Super Mario three D World, we've got Breath of the Wild two, and if rumors are to be believed, we've got the Nintendo Switch Pro coming out as well. We're more likely to get another Mario game as well, considering that the team with Mario Odyssey has not worked... They've not really worked on a Mario game since Odyssey. So they must have something up their sleeves. Do you think that it could be 2017 as the best year for Nintendo? Do I think next year could beat 2017? Yeah. Because I, I, I think when we think of Nintendo years, I would say 2017 stands out as, as the as the prime year. When you had Breath of the Wild, you had Odyssey, you had um, Splatoon 2... Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Arms. Arms. Octopath um, Traveler. Octopath Traveler, yeah. There was a lot. Uh, I mean, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Xenoblade Chronicles I mean, 2. It was a pretty big year. And, and one of my favorite things about that year is that it just it set Nintendo off. It set the Switch off on, on the yeah. best possible trajectory it could have set them off. Yeah, I guess yeah. my point for next year is there's gonna. I think there's going to be so many games that were supposed to come out this year. I mean, we've already got three games there. Uh, that were supposed to come out this year that have been pushed into next year. And we don't know about what games are coming next year beyond these. For all we know, um, uh, Bayonetta 3 could be next year. It's oh. been all, it's been about four years now since Bayonetta Metro 3. Prime Metro Prime 4. Metro Prime Trilogy. Yeah. Like, if, we, if we're throwing in the Nintendo Switch Pro as well, like, that rumors have been going up for so long, you know, th- you know, they want to... I know it's not going to be native 4K, but, you know, they want to be able to... Uh, and I think recently there's been a lot of rumors um for you know they're looking for new like you know proper like 4k screens or you know um improved screen uh, screen quality anyway if 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 that's the case then like do you think it could be better than 20 2017 i guess it's two questions i i guess the first question i ask is do you think it's going to be better from uh a quality of games and do you but also do you think it's going to be the year that they sell the most if they got a Nintendo Switch Pro coming out as well. Don't think. Uh, I think 2017 will triumph. I think they just had a plan, and yeah. that plan they were able to implement it by abandoning the Wii U yeah. early and yeah. going right. This game's not coming out on Wii U. This game's no. not coming out on Wii U. Okay, Breath of the Wild has to because you know it's been mm. in development for so long, uh, and. Yeah, I, I, they haven't had as much like games have been delayed out of twenty twenty. Yeah, we know that to be the case. Um, it which is different to oh, let's plan to have a game every month in twenty twenty one. You know, mm-hmm. like Pikmin three was delayed from March, I think, or April. Yeah, yeah, it was to delayed. October. Mm-hmm. Um, so on that on one side, you could say, oh, we're going to have twenty twenties games and twenty twenty ones games in one year. Yeah, and if they're able to space them out, yeah, maybe it could rival twenty seventeen. But yep. I don't see them having the chance to plan to such an extent. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Breath of the Wild two, if it's as good as Breath of the Wild one and comes along at the same time as the Switch Pro, hmm. yeah, it's going to be a mean year for Nintendo. I would I would say uh, the the one thing I would argue for then maybe it might not be to overall, but and this is probably why it can't beat uh, twenty seventeen can't beat it because it didn't come out till March. But next year will probably be the best opening three months of any year that the Switch has been out so far because 
like I said, no, I think No More Heroes 3 is going to be one. Monster Hunter is coming out in March. Yeah. Bravely Default 2 is coming out in February. February. Super Mario 3D World is coming out in January. Mm. Like, straight off the bat, those are four games that I want. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I want to play all four of those games. And it the, the thing with the Switch that's frustrating me the most is that most games, or the games that I really wanted to play, tended not to come out within the first four months of the year. Uh, you know, from the from I'd say from like July onwards, I'd say most switchers have been pretty good. Yeah. Like this year as well, even if we take in consideration everything that's happened, when you actually look back, what have they released? It's not a bad year. There, there might yeah. be a lot of ports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that doesn't mean they haven't put the effort into those ports. I mean, okay, the three D collection, there's no effort there, but at the same time, it's still three D. It's a collection of three of the best three D Mario games of all time. Three Pikmin of the three best deluxe. Three D games of all time. Yeah, Animal Crossing. Which yeah. is which? Um, we might actually find out tomorrow is probably going to be the best-selling Switch game um, it's if it's if it continues it's on the the trajectory they think it is. We had Xenoblade Chronicles Two, uh, Deluxe Edition. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles which, One. Uh, sorry, two. Uh, not, yeah, yeah. Sorry, not two. Uh, one. Um, what do we have at the start of the year as well? We had um, fire, it was it was a it wasn't a Fire Emblem game. It was it was Fire Emblem Infused. I can't remember what it's called, but that came out in January. Um, oh. Um, face. You know the game FE. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. I can't remember what it's called. Tokyo it's all... Mirage Sessions. That's the one. Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Uh, you know we've got we 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 like I said we got Highway Warriors as well. So when you look back at when you look back this year, it might not have felt it, but they've released enough stuff for them to go okay. Yeah. The, we might have been lacking a, a bit of third party support, but Nintendo released still managed to release a load of good games this year. And a lot of people are very happy just playing Animal Crossing every day. Man, they don't even need the other games. I, I know people who've got almost a thousand hours in that game and yeah. they are more than content and, you know, power to them. You know what? If, like, if one... I, I don't think any game could have been more perfectly timed yeah. <laughs> considering the circumstances. I know for me and for Rosie, it was a massive outlet for us to just go out and enjoy ourselves. Um, I, okay, so, so if you don't think it's going to be... T- Maybe it, the quality of titles is still going to be incredible. Do you think it's going to sell more next year if the if a Nintendo Switch Pro comes out? More than twenty seventeen. Yes. Um. Uh, I guess even this year as well. Like just in general. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Uh. Well, I don't know because you're going to see a price reduction in Series X and PS Five next yeah. Black Friday, twenty twenty one. Yeah. Um. So that'll be 50 quid off. Hmm. Um, I mean, we still haven't seen a real price reduction for the Switch. So yeah. you've got to feel like next year, if they bring out the new Nintendo Switch, or whatever it's going to be called, the I maybe the light will reduce in price. Who knows? I mean, I, I've said this from, from the last, for the last like month or so now. I, I'm convinced that the Switch is going to be the best home console the nintendo even though the switch doesn't actually plug into uh, switch yeah. light doesn't even plug into a even TV. though exactly um but i still think it's going to be their best I, it's going to be their best selling console mm-hmm. since the ds which had I, 150 million i can see them making a switch that doesn't undock absolutely i'm because they can sell up for 150 quid one of the one of the most expensive things about the switch is the screen you know, the rest of the technology isn't that different. I mean, you look, you look at everything. they're going to take out the, all the HD rumble shit. Yeah, they, they, won't, they won't give you um, the, the Joy-Cons because you won't, you won't need... They, maybe they'll package in um, the, uh, the... What's it called? I've got the controller Pro in my controller. hands. The Pro Controller. Uh, the package of Pro Controller, which is, I imagine, cheaper to make. I don't know. I think they will still do Joy-Cons, but they'll be much cheaper to make. I think they'll be Joy-Cons without the HD rumble. Hmm. Maybe bigger buttons? Um, yeah. And yeah, I think they'll be cheaper to produce, therefore mm. hopefully cheaper to buy. Yeah. Um, take away the screen, and you know you've got yourself a you cheaper th- console with more more beef in it. Yeah, I was gonna say, do you think that um, if they're gonna bring out, like I said, a new Nintendo Switch Pro, um, do you think that they might the the basically the, the base Nintendo Switch now will be the new Nintendo that they'll just start selling that that will be the new Nintendo Switch but then they also offer a, like you say a one that'll just go straight on the TV and that'll be the exact same components as the new Nintendo Switch do you think that's a route they'll go down? Hmm, good question. No, I think there'll be three different units. There'll be one that goes in the TV, one yep. that is handheld only, and one that is the hybrid, which is what the we've hybrid. got now. 
yeah and, and they'll st- I'm, i mean that will still be the one they'll push because and and the thing is as well is the light doesn't sell as well as maybe people think oh, it really? sells it sells pretty well. It just doesn't sell anywhere near as, as the hybrid, which is kind of good because people are buying into that. Yes. It was um I, I can't remember who it was. I, I don't I don't even want to reference his name because it was such a ridiculous comment to make. But he said that uh, there was a guy who was um he was huge on Twitter last week that he was saying that um Nintendo shouldn't have made uh shouldn't have made the Switch. It should have just chosen whether to be a home console or a um hand con uh, home console or a handheld console. And I'm just like. I, I don't think he fully understands why the Switch is the most successful console Nintendo have had in nearly two decades. But there we are. Um, let's move on then. Um, so uh, the Netherlands, this is one actually you told me about. The, uh, yes. the Netherlands Gaming Authority will be allowed to fine Electronic Arts 500,000 euros every week it sells loot boxes in FIFA Ultimate Team after the feature was deemed in violation of gambling rules. The decision was approved by the court uh, of The Hague on Thursday... Uh, last week, following a lengthy legal battle between the Gaming Authority and EA. The independent body ruled in 2018 that FIFA's Ultimate Team Packs mechanic was in violation of its gambling act and suggested the weekly fine up to a maximum of 10 million uh, euros, which was then challenged by EA in court. Um, I think this is going to keep happening. It's just going to keep happening. I think the lo- maybe the last hurdle will be the Amer- will be the U.S., but I still think independent states might start. I mean, I, I'm fairly sure that California has already started challenging these these things. And good. Yeah. I mean, uh, the sad thing is that straight away EA tried to defend. EA already trying to defend themselves, saying it's you know this is not as bad as they think it is and all that. But it's like they, they clearly don't see why it's an issue, but they don't care. That and I think they that's don't the care. Thing, they do that's see thing. why it's an issue. And they want to pers- persevere regardless. Yeah, they're well aware of what they're doing, and that's what makes that's what makes it wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I d- thank, thank heavens for the Netherlands. Yeah, good on you. Yeah, and I mean, mo- to them, I hope they enjoy their national lottery as well, uh, of which I was once an advocate. <laughs> um, well done, you. Well done, yeah. all of you. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it does seem like a lot of the EU countries, um, like you know, Belgium and Germany as well, yeah. are pushing back on it, which is which is great. When I mean, it makes sense because it, I, 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 it makes sense to those countries in particular. They're very, it, it, those countries in general just seem to to fight for these, it, you know, it, because it can lead to so much inequality. And like I said, kids growing up thinking gambling is is something that's super easy. It's not a good mentality to have in yeah. children. Because it's so addictive. Um, but we've, we've spoken enough about that. I think everyone knows where we stand when it comes to EA. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next one. Uh, and this is relevant, I guess, for I guess of the four of us, you're most likely to buy this game. Uh, Push Square reporting that Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War will take up a considerable chunk of your PS5's SSD. It is estimated that Sony's next-gen console has around 700 gigabytes of usable storage st- uh, space straight out of the box. But that won't last very long if Cold War's freshly built file, file size is anything to go by. The official word is that you'll need a whopping 133 gigabytes free to install Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War on PS5. That's roughly 20% or one-fifth of your PS5's storage space. Uh, the PS4 version of Cold War re- uh, requires 95 gigabytes of free space. Um, it's interesting because I think the narrative a lot with like the new next generation consoles is that sizes of games are going to shrink. Yeah. Oh. So this has been a thing for Call of Duty uh, with Modern Warfare. The way they package their games, um, uh, you know, and one of the good things about it is, yes, okay, so on Xbox at one point it was over 200 gigs. Yeah. Um, and they did reduce it fairly recently, but by then it had already given up on the game, yeah. not because of its file size, because it didn't respect the players and it just was constantly a buggy mess. And yeah, um, yeah they just didn't respect my time by fixing these problems and making it an enjoyable experience but and that's a shame um, really isn't it because like you, yeah. you put in a lot of effort to play i know it's like okay it's just a game but if you're going to put in a lot of effort to a game and I, this is not a small indie company you know they're making tiny mistakes this is a huge company you know yeah. um but yeah sorry so, i didn't mean to interrupt you no, just no. You, you, um, made, you made a really good point uh, so the structure of the game is you can have the the war zone which is the battle royale and then yeah. you can have the campaign and multiplayer and the co-op bit all are separate chunks and so you can yep. delete the campaign off your hard drive to save 20 gigs you can delete the multiplayer to save another 50 gigs or whatever yeah um 
in my opinion, it should. It, yes, that's that's good, but it's a necessary thing because the file size is so huge to begin with. I don't understand why. I think they could skimp a little on maybe graphical fidelity or, or mm. just be better and respect the players like want to play more than one game. Yeah. Like and also, um, PS Five only being seven hundred gigs. That's surprising. That is surprising, isn't it? I know it? the Series X is about eight hundred and twenty. I think. Yeah, um, I think uh, I think because I think the Series S. I think it was like a, I was looking at it earlier. I can't remember how much it is, but it's not. It's not as big as you think. Yeah, so that's surprising. But yeah, um, I'm not actually going to be getting Black Ops Cold War. Um, yeah. Because I've had my Call of Duty fix, I'm yeah. good for another few years. Yeah, and um, yeah, 133 gigs. I could I could use that on many other more interesting games. It's weird as well because like I, I know it's it's uh it's a they're, you know they're gorgeous games to look at graphically. They're, they're yeah. like you said this about uh when you when you played it, it's a beautiful game to look at, and you can it's one of the best looking games you've played recently. Yeah. Ever. But at the same time, it kind of feels like like Final Fantasy um, 7 Remake was like 90. But I... It's not that I kind of get that, but like, it was a huge game in many respects. You know, it's, a, like, it's not an open world, but it's as close to an open world as you can get without being an open world. And like, Red Dead Redemption is about the same. Red Dead Redemption 2 is about the same. And I completely understand that. You know, when you're roaming around this world, there's so much going on there that I kind of get. But... Uh, the thing with like Call of Duty is it was like the very small fixed, small in comparison fixed levels. So when you take away how I don't know, I could be talking absolute bollocks here, <laughs> and I apologize if I'm completely out of my um, uh, comfort zone. But like it does seem weird that those games are even bigger than like Red Dead Redemption Two. It does seem bizarre. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't. I, mean, I have no answer for it. I, yeah. I don't know what they're doing to not manage space better. Yeah, it's 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 a weird one. Um, they just don't need to because they make so much money. They just neglect how what the player wants and just tells them to play this. Do you think? Um, do you think that's? Do you think that's pretty much it? Do you think that like, like for instance, and I've said this before, we because I think we've had this exact like this exact conversation about Activision in general. Do you think it's? When when a CD Projekt Red brought up Witcher three on the Switch, they put thirty gigabytes on a cartridge, and yeah. that game is huge normally. Yeah. Like, do you think it's just purely down to like compression, and and do you think it's just they're not yeah. working hard enough to make it smaller when they could? I think they. Well, I don't want to say cal- not working hard enough because I don't no. want to say the people working for them are not working hard. But you know what I mean? I think they've done the calculation and they've gone, will we make more money by making the file size smaller? They've turned yeah. around and gone, no, we won't make more money. We'll make less money because we'll have to spend time working on that. Maybe and they've gone, does, yeah. well, let's not bother and they'll just have to deal with it. Yeah. Oh, well, that's that's just... Fr- I mean, it's just... Fr- it's, like I said, me and you aren't going to buy the game, but it, that is frustrating for anyone that has to play the game because they have to start making decisions about... Because that's a game that you will play for a year if you love Call of Duty. So you instantly you're going, right, well, I've only got four fifths left on my PS5 and ga- if all games are going to be that big... You've got five games in your PS5, and that's it. And, with, uh, and the it, new, you know, with the new systems and the SSDs they better pack in, if you want more space, you've got to shell out over two, like two hundred quid. Yeah. If yeah. you want another SSD to stick into it, it's mad. Uh, all right, we're coming to our last topic. Uh, Tom Phillips of Eurogamer reports that Pokemon Go's most lucrative year yet. Uh, was this year, uh, with more than one billion in player spending notched up in over its first ten months. No one alone. was going anywhere. Uh, that's according to data from Sensor Tower, which tracks mobile spending across the iOS app. This year's revenues are already up 11% on 2019 with two months still to go and up 30% when comparing this year's first 10 months alone. Pokemon Go has now earned around $4.2 billion since its stratospheric, stratospheric launch back in 2016. Do you remember but, that? Uh, has never notched up $1 billion in a single year before. Wow. Um, I... I think we saw like Zach actually mentioned Pokemon Go a couple of, yeah, a couple of months ago, it. didn't he? He's been playing it, and it's weird because because um, I wasn't like Rosie was actually into it way more than me, and it was a really it was a really great way for us to go out and like get get some steps in. So I guess for some people it would be an excuse, you know, you know when when the game first came out, oh, not the first game, but when we went into lockdown, for instance, you know, we had to go for walks and stuff. I guess people were maybe getting the most out of their walks, maybe yeah, that could have been a reason for it. And I guess you know if people are going to play games on their phone, yeah, and they're going to and they're going to play a game that gets them moving, yeah, power to them. But yeah. um, 
I have no interest in Pokemon Go. No. I, but I love that other people do. Yeah. No, I, I'm totally with you, man. I, I My brother still plays it. I mention my brother quite often because me and him have very similar tastes, but there's certain things. He loves Pokemon. I'm not, I'm, I, and I've said this before, I'm not massively into Pokemon, but like, I'm glad that he's got something that he, that gets him, you know, going out and walking and yeah. doing steps. It's, it's, it's good. Like, that's what they, that's what I do like about Nintendo. They do stuff like, like this and it's kind of quirky and they're at least trying to, like Ring Fit Adventure as well. It, it's it works and i don't know how they do it they do it all the time and in power to them but yeah uh one billion in a single year is is pretty incredible considering the year that we've we've had um awesome that, that is you, the news do you remember sorry do you remember no, yeah, when pokemon go first came out and there were like hordes of humans going to central park because there was a charizard <laughs> spotted yeah I remember people going crazy all over the world. I, yeah. I, when, it, when it first came out, I remember I was in, um, we just graduated from college, I think it was, in 2016. And uh, I was in Disney, uh, Disneyland Paris with my well, my whole family, my parents, my brother, my brothers and my sister and, and, and Rosie. And uh, my brother Matthew was going around Disney, Disneyland Paris, just catching all these Pokemon, like, well, so waiting in the queue for rides. And yeah. it was perfect. He was just, you know, oh, what? There's one over there. And obviously Disney were doing it, maybe not specifically, but Nintendo were doing it specifically because you were in Disneyland Paris. You're like, oh, they're going to be standing in queues doing nothing for ages. Let's make sure there's one here, one here. It's it's, it's a crazy success story. And yeah, we'll see what Nintendo does uh, after this. All right. Um, Dev, um, any games you've been playing? Any Anything you want to talk yeah. about? Yeah, a few. Overcooked, which is fun. Oh, yeah, you did say, yeah. Um, that's cool because I've only played Overcooked 2 mm. with you boys on stream um, so going back to Overcooked 1 uh, on the Switch can you throw yes. it? no I thought not Someone I'm playing the you... old version so not the new uh, remastered like the re re-release thing right. they've got the all you can eat edition um, playing the old version no okay. throwing um, and yeah stressful mm. um, it's a very stressful but, game yeah, also been playing some uh, Super Monkey Ball on the 3DS. Nice. Yeah, just some good times. Just mm-hmm. using tilt controls, just like, ah, yeah. oh, just my, love it. My, honestly, I think me and you had, need to have a conversation about the 3DS. I don't know where mine's gone. <laughs> because, like, me and you have only only had one since this year. Mm. And I I love I love it. Like, it, yeah. it's, I, I'll talk about mine a little bit later, but yeah. Um, Super Monkey... It, I, I, there's, have you played the Super Monkey Ball on the, on the Switch? Because I think it's a, it, I know it's a. No, no, I think it's a remaster. Isn't yeah, it? it's a remaster. Yeah, it's not even the better. It's not even the best one, but it's still they, they, those games are so much fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and uh, a game that I completed this week um, is Donut County. Oh, Donut so County. Donut County. You play as a raccoon <laughs> working for a donut company who instead of giving people donuts creates holes in the ground and then you can you control the hole in the ground mm. and to swallow everything up including yep. the people who live in donut county <laughs> and it all culminates in you having to take down the trash king and the ra- raccoon overlords who That's have hilarious. come in and destroyed town and created an apocalypse um very amusing game That's on, uh, that does sound hilarious took less than 2 hours um Created by one guy, it seemed. Well, there was credits, but a large, you know, it was it was the yeah. brainchild of one person. Yeah, uh, I think his name was Ben Esposito, but I could be wrong. I probably am. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if I found it on sale for like two quid a while back on Switch, mm. and I was like, uh, yes, played it. Had a had a whale of a time. Mm. The idea of the game is great, and was just about losing. It's like was just about overstaying its welcome and then it finished and I ah, thought there we go good. that's good nice high concept game get it out done go yeah good that, stuff I think that's a real skill when it comes to creating games I think it's a real skill to be able to go I think people will get bored by this point so let's end here and I, I think I it, it does show it that is a skill in itself there's you know there's so many games I've played over the years where like I, I said I said previously with Final Fantasy 7 remake I, I personally feel that game is five hours too long. There's too, way too much padding in that game if they condensed it by... I, I finished it in 30 hours. And there's more I could have done, but I finished... I just kind of blasted through the main story. But they could have cut that game for about five hours and it would have felt better. Yeah. But 
no it's that's really nice that's really i th- what, what did i play before when um it was about two hours and it was just if it had been any longer i would have started getting bored oh my goodness i spoke about it on one of the earliest podcasts and i can't remember oh it's the one where you climb the mountain when you climb the mountain yeah you climb the whole thing is about climbing celeste no it's um on the ps on the playstation um Oh, I, oh, no, we're not um, stopping till we get it. <laughs> it's, it's it's the one where like people join in randomly with you and you can you journey. journey. Oh, journey! What I just said, journey. Of course, <laughs> yeah, you journey. As soon as I said journey, I was like, of course, it's journey. That game is gorgeous. But I think if that game had been about f- three, four hours long, if I couldn't have completed that in one playthrough, I would have been like, do I want to go mm. back to it? But the fact that I just sat there for about two hours and blasted it out, I thought it was amazing. Such a beautiful yeah. experience. Um, but yeah, anything else? Anything else you want to talk about? I want to talk about whatever you've been playing. Well, um, so I've, I've only got two games really. Uh, I, I, obviously, we mentioned Rocket League earlier, but we, we've spent enough time talking about that. Um, so I'm playing Majora's Mask, um, which has been really fun. I don't really want to talk about it too much, other than it's so much darker than Ocarina of Time. Like my God, man, it's 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 more it's way more beautiful. But way more dark than Ocarina of Time. I, I love Ocarina of Time, and I, I had such a good experience playing that recently. Um, but what's really interesting with Majora's Mask is there's there's way less I remember about it that I, I didn't play that as a kid as much as I played Ocarina of Time. So there's so many things I could fall back on. But with Majora's Mask, there's moments where I'm going, I don't even remember this bit. I don't remember the, like the temples. I don't remember them at all. Like I'm just. That's good. I, I, which is which has been really good actually because it was that that meant for me it was incredibly fresh that yeah. you know I was going into this and just not knowing not remembering anything I was like okay this feels like a new game other than it feels like a game that I've watched someone play but never really played myself even sure. though I've played myself if that yeah, makes sense yeah, yeah. because it's been so long since I played it um, I'll talk about that in in future episodes because uh, I'm I'm probably about halfway through now. Uh, but the game I'm going to talk about very quickly is Super Mario 64 because I finally completed it. Um, Lovely. I, I, I think I mentioned it. I think I mentioned it maybe last week. I'm not sure if you were here, but um, I maybe maybe you were here. But I, I do think the la- the later levels in that in in that game are. I don't want to say worse. Lackluster. I just think that maybe they started struggling towards the end of those levels, and they're just. I like, find oh. that with a lot of games. Yeah, it's. You, you get the first like batch of like six seven levels you're like wow this is so creative Nintendo does such done such an incredible job this is still a classic game but then you get to the later stages of the game and you go I just want to be Bowser now and that that's pretty much what happened I I got to like 65 stars and I was like do I really want to play TikTok Clock do I really want to play um uh Rainbow Ride and I was like no so I'm just gonna go get many- to- 60 right is that how many you need Seven, you need 70 to, to face bowser to beat the, right. to beat the game so i i was on like i had like five left and i was like you know what? i'm just gonna collect some of the stars from like I, I pretty much got all six stars from all the previous seven levels and i was like i i just i just i'm gonna collect uh the hundreds uh 100 coins get it get the stars and then beat bowser and i that ending is so emotional that the end music to that game Honestly, I, I imagine there might be uh, a few people l- listening who would probably agree with me. Um, it's such an emotional moment. I I remember that a lot when I played it as a kid because it would have been the first game that I ever really beat where I was like, again, in 3D. And it was the game that I mentioned the first episode we ever did of the podcast. Um, and it was so weird. I was sitting there. I wasn't getting emotional. But I was like, wow, this is really powerful. You really feel like you've gone on this incredible adventure with Mario, like an incredible adventure in the sense that this sort of, for a lot of people, this would have been a huge moment playing a 3D game for the first time and then exploring all these levels and being like, wow, what an experience that was. It still holds up. I mean, it, the camera is the most frustrating thing in the world, but you kind of accept it because you just go, the Nintendo aren't going to do anything with it. So you've just got to accept that this is, you just, yeah. basically, you've just got to accept that you are playing 64 on a 64. Well, that, that's that's, that's the interesting say. thing. Um, I wonder if you noticed because you're obviously playing games like a human being these days, not like <laughs> an animal on the N64. But they switched the the cameras. They did, so yeah. It was, it was inverted on the N64, but it isn't now. But they've just added yeah. inverted camera controls, mm. and it's like, no, you've just fixed your game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've that... just put it back to what it was. Like, 
Yeah, that, that was something I really didn't understand because a lot of people as well were like, I grew up learning how to play this game. I learned how to play games by playing this game and then yeah. you've inverted them from what they were. It's like, why have you done that? Like, it's so weird. Because I found that when I played um when I played Wind Waker, um, I, I, I found that really, uh, I found it really, I just found it really tricky to get used to because I think that's inverted. Um, or maybe, maybe it was just me, maybe it was just controller. Some game, it? yeah, quite, uh, quite a few GameCube games were. Um, yeah. Remember Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg was inverted. And that was frustrating. I, I, I really struggled with inverted. Uh, I, I, yeah. yeah, I really struggled with inverted controls. Me too. But yeah, um, it was a really good experience. It, it's good for me now that I, I know it sounds bad, but I'm not going to go for the 120 stars. I don't need to. Uh, same with uh, Sunshine. I'm just focusing on Galaxy now. I can just put all my energy into finishing Galaxy, which I'm trying to do, yeah. uh, as well as playing Majora's Mask. And do you know what? It's... I know we kind of focus a little heavily on Nintendo a lot in in this podcast. I think Wait. it's because yeah, I think it's because like we 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 all we all kind of did grow up with Nintendo. Like maybe not as our main console, but like for for us, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, we we did. I mean, um, I've been streaming Donkey Kong Country this week. Yeah, yeah, which is so. incredible. Um, but it, just going back and playing the uh, like I said, Ocarina of Time and Super Mario sixty four. It's just it's put a real smile on my face and. I just wish the one thing uh, maybe we'll talk about this with the 3DS at some point in the future. I just wish that there was a way to play games from the 3DS, like the you know the Virtual Console on the Switch, because there's so many games in that where I go, I want to be able to play them on my Switch. I want yeah. more reasons to be able to play old Zelda games. I want to play uh, old Mario games that aren't on the Switch. You know, um, uh, you know maybe the Game Boy games, there's yeah. all the Game Boy Advance games on the Switch. I don't, I. I I, I kind of want to see what Nintendo are going to do with online because I know the virtual console is a whole other topic we can talk about some other time. But yeah, Nintendo, just, just please, just do it. I, I, as it is, nice. though, I, I'm still using their 3DS, so I hope they just don't close their um, online yeah. store. But yeah, that is, um, I think that I think that pretty much wraps it up, Dav. Um, uh. Thanks so much for joining again. It's lovely to see your face. Uh, that is the end of our podcast number 29. Uh, again, thank you so much for listening today. If you have enjoyed the show, then please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Patreon. Uh, tell your friends uh, and give us a review or a comment. It would mean the world to us. Uh, I think Zach is going to, like I said, the episode's come on a Saturday. I always say that. So Zach should be streaming tomorrow if you're listening to this on Saturday, which would be the Sunday. Um, and we're all streaming throughout the week as well. So Johnny, sure check- what's that? I'm going to be streaming the Xbox Series X next week. Is it next week? Next week. Oh my God. Goodness. Next Tuesday. What? Oh, okay, then people have to. Uh, yeah, make sure you check into Tuesday. Tuesday um, went. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna steal your spot because yeah, it's go for Series it, man. X. go for it. It's, I mean, of course, yeah, it's it's, it's the release date. You have to. <laughs> I'm gonna go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, go for it. All evening. Uh, only only missing out a bit for the podcast. Nice. Um, and then we're just get so like what I'm doing. I'm playing Yakuza like a dragon. Yeah, and there's some serious stuff in the campaign of it, mm. and the, the main quests of it. I'm going to do that off stream. I'm not nice. going to waste your time with that, people. <laughs> so I'm going to spend time with you, doing all the weird side quests and playing Yakuza Mario Kart nice. and going to the Sega arcades and playing Virtua Fighter in Yakuza, <laughs> and going to be finding uh, these side quests where there are these grown men in nappies, like in a nursery, who just crave women treating them like babies, <laughs> and like. I'm also going to do the side quest where you have to go and help this crayfish, this little lobster that this homeless person has fallen in love with and wants to save them from this bridge they've fallen off, only to find out that the homeless person wants to eat the crayfish, so then you've <laughs> got to fight the homeless person, and then that homeless person becomes a member of your party. I'm going to be doing stuff like that. Yeah. Y- Yakuza's a pretty standard game. Just yeah. Just, out there. Pretty standard. just normal. Pretty yeah, normal. make sure you check out Tav then on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday because that sounds absolutely bonkers uh dav thanks once again uh we are video games ahoy and we'll see you next week ahoy ahoy